How radical, how ridiculous is your faith? Welcome to Connections for the Weekend. I was recently reading the account of the prophet Elijah. It was at a point in his ministry where it was coming to an end. He had seen mighty things happen. He had just come down off of Mount Carmel where God brought fire down on the mountain. He had, he had run for a while from, from uh, uh, Jezebel and, and, and had uh, found the broom tree and cried out, God, just let me die. And, uh, and God had fed him with ravens and restored him. And now it was time for the mantle of authority that was on Elijah's life to be passed on to another man. God directs Elijah to go find a prophet by the name of Elisha, and Elijah does that. He finds Elisha. Elisha is out in the field plowing with his oxen, and Elijah goes over to Elisha. He takes off his cloak, and he places it upon Elisha. Now, that was symbolic of the placing of an authority, the placing of leadership upon another or the placing of a mantle of leadership upon Elisha. And Elisha receives it, and he tells Elijah, let me go tell my family goodbye. He immediately received that. He goes and he tells his family goodbye. Listen to the account in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19. It says, Elisha goes away from Elijah, and he takes his yoke of oxen, and he slaughters them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah, and he became his attendant. I want you to catch what just happened in this account. Elisha expressed a faith that was absolutely, in some people's eyes perhaps, ridiculous. Not only did he agree to follow Elijah, Elisha tore up his plows, tore them in two, killed his oxen, and then burned everything and walked away. Does your faith look like that? I ask myself the same question. Is my faith so radical, so ridiculous, that when I hear God's call upon my life for something, I'm willing, I'm ready to leave it all behind. I'm ready to put it all aside. That's the kind of faith that moves mountains. It's the kind of faith that God calls us to, to follow with abandon, even reckless abandon, total surrender in our lives. I wonder sometimes, though, if it looks more like we reserve and we hold back. We take our oxen, we take our plows, and we put them in storage just in case. Just in case we have to turn to a plan B. Faith in God requires, does not call for plan B. It only calls for that plan A of hearing, hearing God's voice and obeying Him with abandon. My prayer for you this weekend is that you would allow the story of Elijah and Elisha, two men of great faith, two men of reckless abandon, two men of total surrender to God's way in their life, be an encouragement to you in your faith. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for your mercy, for your grace, and for your wonderful love for us. I thank you, God, that, that you call us to, to a, a life of, of adventure, a, a life of risk, a life of abandoning all this earthly stuff in order to experience the heavenly blessings that you have for our life. God, I pray that we would be a people that would live our lives at risk, at adventure in you, God, and at, at, at total abandonment to your will and to your way in our life. And Lord, when the world starts to try to tell us, wait a minute, wait a minute, you better make sure you're following God. Wait, wait a minute, you better make sure that you have a plan B in place. Let us say, no, if God has called me to it, I know God will see me through it, and I know that God is going to every step of the way. Lord, give us that kind of faith. Give us that kind of belief in you, an almighty God. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us this weekend on Connections. If you're here in the Vero Beach area, we invite you out to Emmanuel Church. Our Sunday celebration is at 9.30 a.m.